Hey, Gabor. So good to have you with me today. Thank you. I really appreciate it. How are you? Yes, thank you so much. Well, thank you for the invitation. More than welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm doing well. Yeah. Uh, I can't really complain. Um, I'm going through my own challenges uh, with one of my business being closed, but uh, we hopped online, so we're providing service there. And uh, my coaching business is um, quite busy um, as I support uh, many people. So my existing clients uh, keep really close contact. I'm contacted all of them and uh, make sure that they're on the right uh, track, uh, right mm -hmm. mindset, they're taking action. And, and if it's somebody's going through real challenges and maybe it's emotional stuff and um you know there's a support for them so which is important so overall i'm doing pretty good excellent well look i think and that kind of leads into what i want you to really give us some insight about today because something i've definitely been hearing a lot from the complete different spectrum is you know how to maintain that mindset when there's a positive mindset i should say when there's so much change going on and how to use that constructively um, but before we get into that, I guess, I'd love for you just to explain a bit about your background, um, your experience, what's brought you to where you are today. Yeah. Um, look, <clears throat> as far as, um, you know, my work as a coach, uh, I think it started long, long, long time ago, really. Um, even when I was a child, I was super interested about the, what's going on upstairs here and how it's actually, how does it work and why do I feel the way I feel? And, mm -hmm. and what's the reason I feel sometimes sad or I feel extremely happy or, um, you know, try to find some answers to big questions in life. Um, so I was always a bit of a thinker um, and I started reading books like Freud at a young age when I had really no clue what I was reading about. But something was calling me to... I guess, um, self-discovery and some answers of why do I do things or generally why people do certain things. Um, so that led me to um, initially um, later in life to a Buddhist uh, sort of uh, approach of Buddhist teachings, which I was super interested about. Um, and then later on, as you know, um, I was getting involved with yoga and a physical part of yoga, yoga practices, and also the mental part of uh, the teachings of yoga, which is, I still find it very fascinating and very interesting and very useful. And actually, I think now in this um, environment, it's one of the things I could suggest to everybody to do some kind of mindfulness practice and, and meditation and yoga practice because it's super helpful and we can expand on that later. Um, and then specifically with coaching as such, uh, mindset coaching and life coaching, um, the, the journey started with the studies about 10 years ago, a little bit deeper, when I got involved with um, the coaching institute in, in Melbourne. And then from there, Tony Robbins and many, many different uh, inspiring uh, coaches and uh, psychologists uh, who I studied with um, and developed my own approach and business to support people. And basically, I just really uh, wish all of us human beings to reach our potential. To basically, I think if you talk about success in life, I find that um, if uh, we achieve whatever we think uh, that we need to get to, you know, the shoulds, that I should do this, I should do that. Mm -hmm. If we can mm -hmm. actually bridge that and we actually do the things that we need to do and we achieve it, I think we're going to be successful, regardless of what other people think what success is. And, you know, the parents think of certain things what success is and our partners think of certain things. Maybe even the kids are thinking, oh, you know, my father should be doing this and that. Uh, but I think if we are comfortable with ourselves and we are growing as a human being, yeah, you know, that's um, need to be, you know, counted success. So look, um, my coaching is all about supporting people, 
I enjoy it tremendously. So it's a little bit of a healthy selfishness around it too. <laughs> yeah. In a good way, because I, I love you what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think it's similar to you. You do something what you, you like to do as I got to know you. And, you know, that passion will uh, create some beautiful things. And, and uh, so look, sum it up. I think uh, I just here to support people and if i do that i feel like i'm doing a good job <laughs> incredible incredible and you know from from the work i've seen you do and obviously you know your your passion comes through very well and you're very very good at it so it's nice to see someone doing something like this that actually has their heart in the right place as well so um look i guess the war today as i mentioned i've i've had conversations with a lot of people so everyone from clients to family to friends who are obviously going through some, some are going through not that much of a change to be honest or they're really um, enjoying it and I'd love to touch on about that because obviously there's some people that probably feel guilty about that but um, there's also on the other end of the spectrum people who have pretty much lost everything and I think having a, being able to maintain a positive mind frame or a mindset, whatever you want to describe it as, is something that is pretty pretty important but understanding as well that it doesn't need to be perfect all the time so i'd really love just to get your kind of thoughts on what you've seen lately and then maybe we can go into a bit about how to really start to gauge what's going on from a, a change perspective as well because i think it's the rapidness of what's happened that's really potentially um throwing a few people off path yeah okay maybe i start with that the the rapid change um Actually, what's been happening, you know, uh, back like sort of thousands of years, uh, the change was quite slow. So if, if you look at, uh, you know, industrial revolution, even, even way before that, the, the movement of change was not as fast definitely as it is now. Um, you know, from say having fire and then from the fire, we actually develop into industrial revolution. It took, took a long time, really. Um, and our brain right now, even the technology and the changes, which is already fairly rapid, our brain is not really wired to, to go with that change that quickly. So it actually needs time. Now, something like this, like this pandemic and the, obviously the health uh, challenge we'll be facing, that came pretty quick. So the change what going, people going through, again, it's very fast. So like we had to change our businesses. Most people all of a sudden find ourselves in Zoom meetings like every day. Like five <laughs> oh, yeah. meetings a day and everybody's like, okay, this is great in some, some level because it's quite comfortable that you're in your own home and you can just, you can, you know, I saw videos when a guy forgot to put his pants on or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few of those too. <laughs> in one sense, it's, um, it's great and it's comfortable and I'm sure something will remain and we can use. On the other sense, it's a, it's a massive change for businesses to all of a sudden from, from having connection to clients and people face to face and doing and something what we used to do that changed literally one day to another. So one of our businesses, uh, as you know, you have a yoga studio which had to close literally on Tuesday and then Wednesday we were online. But the, the reason we could go online on Wednesday because we had preparation before that. So the time frame was for me not so rapid because you know, I'm, now I'm like putting myself up to some level, but I'm just saying my example that we had to think ahead of what's possible and what what could I do? So what are my possibilities? What possibly could happen? And what are my actions? What do I need to do to be able to go through this smoothly? So Tuesday we closed, Wednesday we were online, but previously the two weeks before I had to project forward that it's a possibility. So what can I do? And this is already coming to, to the tools perhaps. Yeah, it's great. Um, we need to think of long term. Long -term. So business owners who are listening to this, parents, uh, people in relationships, we kind of don't want to just think um, just for today and, and a quick result. We actually want to think in a long term, which means we need to project ahead and need to back ourselves up consistently. And this is very important. 
So back to the change. The rapid change, the only way we can deal with rapid change is that we actually project forward and then look at possibilities. And of course, there's a certain tools we can use because what I find to your question with what I see today, mm. it's, uh, I see a lot of people, and including in some level myself and, and friends and family, um, who get overwhelmed by the current situation. So the actual fear takes over and almost like paralyzing our mind, paralyzing ourselves. Um, and a fear of, you know, maybe a health related, but as what I see now, it's a lot of, uh, you know, financial, which, is, which I understand. Mm. It's, we have two pandemics, really. One is a health related one and one is financial. Yeah. And I understand that perhaps uh, money is not uh, the salvation for everything. But on the other hand, it's a very important tool to have safety. Now, I'd like to say something on that. Um, safety and certainty is such a huge human need that when it's challenged, in a way it's challenged now, that creates massive, massive um, problems in the mind. Mm. And this is something that's very important. We sort of wired in our brain um, as soon as we were born of two things. One is uh, survival, which is pretty obvious that we need it. Safety and also comfort. So survival and comfort is two things what uh, kind of been challenged a lot now. Um, but on the other hand, survival and comfort is also a downfall because if you look at life, most of the things in life are uncertain. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here you know, comes the growth. Everybody, everybody's <laughs> saying about you need to be in control. You be in control. And it's like, okay, the first question I ask my clients is what is that you can control? That's like a first question everybody should should and need to ask themselves, what is it that actually I can control? And I mean, when we really answer the, the question, we kind of realize that hmm, it's not much. It's not much we can control. But one thing is very important we can control and we need to control is ourselves and how we think. So how the mindset is and how we can control ourselves to create the future for ourselves. And we can do that though. So the circumstances are mainly out of our control. And I'm talking about jobs, businesses, health, in some level, like right mm -hmm. now, relationships. You know, some things obviously we can control ourselves, but when I'm married, I'm not in control with my wife, right? That's 100%. Yes. Many men think they will be- I was gonna say, I'm glad you said that. That's good, because- uh... <laughs> You know, I'm sure uh, we lots of other stories. Yeah, I have trust. Mm. So it's all good. By the way, I'm happily married, so it's all good. Um, but I don't have 100% control, mm. nor I need to have. Um, but most human beings try to think that we have like certainty in everything, which is not true. And this is a perfect example. We don't have control of everything. Now, so what happens today? On the other hand, so our uncertainty are pretty massive right now. And that creates a big issue for human beings. So when uncertainty is high and certainty is low, then we, we can have our mindset when we go towards fear and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So basically that's the play where we need to actually balance it out, the certainty mm -hmm. and uncertainty in this situation. And as we said just now, that we can only be certain ourselves. So what we need to do is start to think of how can we take charge of ourselves? And you know, a lot of so, time charge of our feelings and emotions. Yeah, so good board with that. I'm sure that there's probably lots of people, you know, watching going, yeah, I get that. I know I need to kind of change my way of thinking, but what's the first kind of step if someone's sitting there just feeling like the whole world's on top of them, they're obviously stuck in a fear mode. They just have lost 
their job or their relationship or both or whatever, or they're stuck in a really bad um, home situation, there could be numerous things. What's the, what's kind of the first step you would recommend for someone like that to kind of take action to, because I'm, I'm assuming it's not going to be an overnight thing, right? Or it could be, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, look, Anthony Robbins uh, mm -hmm. says that change is, uh, change is like that. He always snaps his yeah. Change is, uh, change is rapid, change is immediate. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it can be, but I think um, most times a change takes time, like until we actually change our view and our perspective. And this is the key. This is, a, this is the first thing I would, um, and I suggest to my clients as well, but, you know, I'm my first client, and this is important. I'm my first experiment. <laughs> so yeah. I have to, you know, um, do the same things I ask my clients to do. So the first thing is when we feel fear, we actually have to ask ourselves what's real and what's not. Mm. So I would say the first step is having a little bit of a reality check. Because the thing is with the mind is, you know, I'm sure you can relate to this and people who's listening maybe can relate to this. There is a little voice sitting on their shoulder. I don't know which shoulder it is. But one of the <laughs> I'm both, not again, oh. I slip in between. <laughs> yeah, sitting on her shoulder and saying things. Mm -hmm. And that's usually saying, oh, Katya, what do you think? How could you, you can't do that. What do you think? Who do you think you are? All that kind of stuff. And look, this little, which I call just a mini me, yeah, sitting on the shoulder and talks to us, we actually have to have this uh, different relationship with that mini me on the shoulder. We actually become, need to become, we must become friends with it. Mm. Um, and have this relationship when we actually know that this little mini me is sitting there to keep me safe because that's one of our first need, very important to keep us safe and to survive. So the mini-me is doing everything. When the mini-me questions your action and says, okay, why would you do that, Katya? You're not capable of doing that. Actually, what the mini-me try to do is just keep you sit. Don't do anything, you're fine. You don't have to move anywhere, you are okay. Just stay here, it's all gonna be okay. So having this relationship um, in a friendly way, so I know this mini me just tried to keep me safe, so I always thank. Thank you for your conversation. Thank you for your comment. I understand, but I'm gonna still try to do something about this situation. I, I get it, thank you. Just, no, nah, just, just. Yeah, acknowledgement. Got that. Yeah, got okay. it, all right. Okay, so that's. Uh, so that conversation is happening. Now, that's where I'm saying the first question is what's real and what's not. Because this conversation happening, and most of the time, this conversation is actually not real. This is like the conversation we, we don't really need, or it doesn't need to happen. So we need to assess the situation and find reality. Now, I put reality in quote unquote because who knows what reality is for each person and people. But the thing is, we need to assess the situation is uh, the actual inner conversation I had, what is real about it and what is not. And this is important because if we try to do, um, you know, try to find solutions some, for something that's actually not real, then it's a pointless act. Because most time, and psychologists say this, that the fear itself is fantasized experiences appearing real. Fantasized experiences. And perfect now because we project it into the future and we say, you know, if you don't go back to work right now, it's going to be a disaster. And within the mind, we use language which is very strong, like mm -hmm. disaster, nightmare, all those kind of things. So we need to, the first thing, is we need to actually come to reality. Check reality and check the inner communication. What kind of language I use in my head? Do I use the language of disaster or could I use something else that I could say, this is a big challenge, but how can I find solution for this? Now, 
also we have to understand that the mindset <clears throat> is like wearing a torch in our head. You know, when you go to like, um, I don't know, I haven't been in a mine, but I've been in a, like, um, you know, somewhere. Climbing or rock climbing, like you, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now that torch is there because you need to see obviously where you're going. And this is exactly what the mindset is. Yeah. Whatever you're focusing on, or whatever we humans focusing on, and we, and we light it up, that's what we're gonna get back. So if I have a torch, that um you know it lights up you know all the bad things in life all the disasters all the things that my business will never recover from this or i can't change you know i my business running this way and i'm not not capable of change and shift a little bit and run it this way then what i'm gonna get is the negativity mm -hmm. i can't do attitude so we actually need to look this way and light the torch on something that's actually useful for me and i know it's perhaps challenging and maybe that's why the change is not so rapid but it takes time but we need to focus on different need to shift our mindset which basically mindset is a shift in direction of thinking yeah um and that's why most times I come and play with my clients because they need a help so we can have a constructive communication of now, how are we going to change the view? Where do I need to look? Mm. So usually I ask constructive questions, which they need to have a constructive answer. Yeah. The first question would be, um, what's real and what's not? Where do I focus on? What do I focus on? And look, everybody who's listening right now, we can have two choices, focusing on problems, of focusing on solutions and I know and people heard this before I know I heard it already I know and I'm saying to my clients as well I know but it's about implementation mm. you know how many things I heard in life <laughs> 20 years ago I know and people say to me I know this already yes but my question is are you implementing are you taking action around it consistently not once, not twice, but like consistently and creating habits. And that's my next point. Through that thinking, creating habits, which a consistent uh, mindset will create a habit, which will create a result. So we need to have structure and habits creation to actually get what we want. And it has to be consistent. We, you know, one time eating uh, broccoli, <laughs> that's okay, but it's not going to help. You know, and the same thing with one time eating McDonald's or one time eating the pizza or having a cake, that's okay. But if it's consistent, that's habitual, that's not okay probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a consistent, it's co consistency what's uh, the real deal. I love that, Gabor, and I think something I've heard from a lot of people is that, you know, say they did it first bit and they go, okay, I want to, um, my mindset's shifted, I want to be a, um, a business owner, I want to become a florist, right? And they're like, okay, I don't know how to do it, I don't do anything like that. And I think where people fall down is they, they lose the, the, I guess, the small wins along the way. So have you got any advice, I guess, to people if they are going down that trajectory of hitting a, hitting a big goal, what they can do to kind of, make sure they keep on track and keep that consistency up. Yeah, the major thing is uh, chunking, chunking down. So, you know, somebody has, most of us, you know, business owners and people who want to achieve things, they have pretty audacious, big mm. mental goals. And that's okay. I want to have this. That's fine. But what we find is, you know, for example, you look at a book and I book 500 pages you really want to read that book and you know that if I read this book, I'm going to have some knowledge when I implement and my business or my relationship or my health is going to be better. Now, we know this, but we still don't take action. What we do is <laughs> buy the book and then sometimes the book actually, we bought it and we feel good because we took action, we bought the book. I know I should be reading the book and then I put it down into the shelf and never touch it again. Other scenario, we get the book 
and we actually start reading it. I read 25 pages, 30 pages, 40 pages, I put it down and I kind of forgot about it. And then I don't go back. Now, my suggestion, and it's not even my suggestion, actually it's a, if psychology and positive psychology who teaches us that we need to chunk things down. So we can't have just look at the 500 page book, but actually there's a reason there's chapters in the book. There's already a book structured. So even when they written the book, they were not like, I'm gonna write on 500 pages today. No, they actually had a plan. Okay, structure, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Within that, there's certain, you know, titles and, and um, quotes and all sorts of things. So basically we need to chunk down all the things that we need to do. So if somebody wants to change their business structure or somebody actually, I don't know, got, uh, you know, don't have a job anymore, they need to look somewhere else, but look at the big picture. From the big picture, we need to take small steps. Mm -hmm. Massively important. Um, for example, today, or yesterday I asked my older son, I said, I think it would be really good for you to go down to the garage as a stationary bike. And before we start the homeschooling, which is, this is a challenge itself, <laughs> for both parties, for kids and parents. <laughs> I'm um, sure people can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to go down to the garage and ride the bike and do a, maybe a 15 minute workout and I will help. So, okay, he's like, yeah, cool. And I said, just ride five minutes because he hasn't been riding on stationary bike. And he said, no, 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 five minutes, that's not enough, 20 minutes. I said, look, trust me, when I'm saying 20 minutes is quite a lot for you, he's only 11 and a half. I said, maybe do five minutes. So anyway, we went down, he actually rode five minutes and he was like, oh, that is hard. I said, <laughs> Imagine if you did 20 minutes, that would be, you know. So today he goes downstairs, I go with him, and he said, uh, I'm going to do seven minutes. So he took on the mindset of, I'm going to add to it, but I will not go to 20 minutes. I'm going to go seven minutes. So he had two minutes to it. At that two minutes, he was not really challenged, but it was manageable. And this is important. It wasn't a step which was out of his um, vision of that's not possible. Yeah, this is massively important because if we set ourselves up to success, we actually need to have small successes on the way because the big success is here. But along the way, we need to chunk it down to have little success. That's why I ask my kids as well, make your bed in the morning. Like, your, head, your bed needs to be made. And it's actually not because, you know, I'm a parent and, you know, you should be making your bed. It's because when we make our beds, that's one action what we took right in the morning and became success. Like, I actually feel good. They feel good mm -hmm. that they make their beds. Why? Because I did something already, which I should be doing, and I'm doing it so... Actually, I'm doing the thing what needs to be done. And it's a small thing, but actually have a massive, um, you know, uh, effect for the whole day. We start with small success. And this is very important. So my suggestion is chunking down, create structure, uh, create um, measurable steps, which is achievable, which is stretching me so I feel that I'm challenged but it is also possible. So I'm not always stretching myself because actually that's not working because mm -hmm. then I don't achieve the goal, even that small step has already put me back to, I can't do it, I'm not good enough. Yeah, I love that, Gabor. And I think it's so, like, just the, the analogy you use within your own family. So, you know, for parents and even business owners who are trying to, you know, train up their team in new processes or new ways of doing things, making sure it's not just throwing it at someone and going, well, figure it out or, you know, stressing them out as well, making sure that you can 
um, you know, give them a little bit by little support along the way to make sure and feedback as well. I think that's such a key thing. I was actually going to ask you how you could apply these tactics to um, either, you know, different areas of your life that, or people in your life, but you just answered that. So it's fantastic. Um, I guess one question I've got for you, say you're going along that process and something comes up and you feel yourself falling back into that negative mindset of, um, I can't do this. I'm, you know, that, that, Person on your shoulder telling you that you're, you know, not good enough, whatever it may be. What are some things you can do to kind of really bring yourself back to then and really celebrate the progress you've done? Yeah, it's a very good question because it comes up a lot. Mm. Um, my answer to that is pause. Again, we look at the reality of things. And if we can't answer, you know, at that moment that I am good enough and I can do this. I need to actually find an example in my life, which most people have. I would say 99.9% .9 of the people, basically everybody has. Find an example when I had a situation when I said to myself, I can't do it, but actually I made it through and I did it. Mm. So what I mean by this is, um, you know, today I'm challenged with a certain thing um i know my business is not running well and i don't know i have issues with the staff and what have you and i don't think i can manage it i need to actually come to the place when i find an example that i've done something in the past which i thought i couldn't do but actually i did or something i couldn't do but i shifted something else i didn't do this but i did something else which brought me to some different place and today I'm here and I'm still looking good, healthy, nothing didn't fall apart. I'm not a puddle on the floor. I'm not laying down and screaming and, you know, so basically I'm finding an example in my life when it was possible. So therefore it will be possible again. And this is the question I ask my clients. I just pause there. And then they don't even know what I'm going to obviously ask him. But I ask them to, okay, find an example when you had this similar situation already. And when they explain it to me like, oh, yeah, and they always find one. Oh, yeah, I remember when I was blah and I was, I thought I can't swim. And then I jumped in and, you know, I had to swim. I had no choice and I was doing it and I did it. I said, okay, then. So there's no difference. There is no difference between this and this. It's the same thing. Mm. So my suggestion is to pause. Again, look at the reality of things. Look at what's possible and what's too much. And also look at um, what I've already achieved. You know, because most of us humans are funny. This is, this is very funny. It's nothing actually wrong with us because I think this is a little bit faulty. <laughs> There you go, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> we, we came off the production line and then and all of a sudden we can relate to this. We actually, it's a little bit faulty. Can't, can't, believe, can't believe our own mind and our own brain, you know? Yeah. So we need to actually find an example what we know is true and it's, can't, um, it's sort of counterindicate what, what I'm thinking right now. So therefore, if I could do it then, I will be able to do it now. So that's uh, definitely one thing uh, I would suggest. I love that. And Gabor, I think that applies. There's been a few people who I've spoken to who are, you know, starting out something new and they've had people they love or people that are really close to them say, oh, you can't do that or you can't, you're not good enough or, um, you know, obviously that's coming out of their own fear and stuff. But I think that that would be a really tactical way to really apply and kind of deter from that thinking as well. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. It happens a lot. <laughs> now, when, when other people are suggesting things and they, they do it from their heart and, you know, let it be parents or partners or friends, um, I always suggest that uh, people asking the questions of who are you? Like, who's the person talking to me? What have you done? So what's your results? Um, so I can engage if the whatever they're suggesting is coming from a expert view. And I'm not, you know, I'm saying this with respect and yeah. I'm saying this to my parents perhaps, but 
Well, actually, previously, before this conversation, I had a client, and, and a, a client is young, is 22, and his parents has a certain view about certain things, and he's got a different view. And I think as I asked, I said, well, are your parents are expert on this subject? No. Okay, well then, say thank you for the suggestions, and then you just still need to find the expert who can yeah. tell you the answers or possibilities, because that's very important. And you can model that. This is another thing which is important. Model. Yeah, completely, completely. Yeah. I agree with that, Gabor. And I think the other thing as well is, um, you just mentioned that having an expert, it's really, when you mentioned about the trajectory of you've got to go, well, something I've found in my own career and, and life itself, if I have a question and I'm not sure about it, you can, you can leapfrog ahead by finding the right person who's been there and done that and has that experience as well. So I think it's the whole thing of feel, not feeling like you're alone in this journey. And um, I'm sure, I'm not sure how you feel about that in terms of giving, um, people see, seeking out those that can help them as well. And I think especially in this time when it can be quite isolating sitting at home and um, being around maybe people who don't believe in what you're doing or whatever, being able to find that community online in order to really connect and help you with your growth moving forward. And also your mindset as well. If you can talk to people who go, yeah, man, this is awesome. on the right track. That just makes you feel incredible. So. Definitely. Um, I think finding experts and model you see, um, most times, whatever we try to achieve, somebody has on some level done it before us. Mm. Um, yes, we can come up with new and different things, but uh, basically somebody done something similar, uh, what we try to achieve. And I think modeling those people is the best thing to do. Um, you know, if the relationship is in a, I have a relationship, but it's in a rocky road. Um, somebody has already been there who's actually gone through, and I can ask some advice because they already have done it. If it's a business um, decision, um, somebody has already done what I try to achieve, I need to seek out the very, very top expert and the person who achieves success and basically model what they have done. These are the steps. If I follow those steps, I will get a very similar result. Why? Because I'm just as human being as they are. And if they can do it, I can do it too. Now, I don't have 50,000 followers on um, Instagram or a million. And then somebody has. And somebody has done the job but I'll, I'm, I'm on, but I have less followers. That should not be the you know, shouldn't determine my value and shouldn't mm. determine of how I feel about myself. This is very important too. Yeah. I can model people and then it comes back to the beginning of the conversation. Some things I con can control and some things I can't. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm an expert and I have the knowledge, but I don't achieve the perception of success like through social media, followers and all that kind of stuff. Actually, it's not what matters what matters of how I feel about myself, what I want in life and what I want to achieve, not just me personally, but everybody. Um, can I share one thing why I think yes. it's very yes, important, um, which I can suggest to everybody and is again coming from a, um, a, a positive psychology and, and how to manage self. Which is, which is, I think, is very key right now. So it's about uh, a few steps, uh, a few things that we actually need to do consistently. And one thing you said is connection to community. So connection to, you know, other people, um, Zoom meetings, I don't know, Facebook, phone call, which actually not about COVID-19, but it's about actually about the other person. It's actually about how you are going. How are you? It's not discussing what the media says, having conversation about actually stepping away and completely having like a conversation of what did you cook today? If, if somebody needs some kind of help, of course, you address how's your family, what are you going through, but not talking about the media stuff. It's actually 
connecting with people. This is very important. Yeah. Uh, exercise, daily exercise, every day, some form of exercise. It releases the great hormones, makes us feel good. Um, good food, good nutrition, and good hydration. And it's not something where you don't know. <laughs> I'm saying again, it's something where we know, but perhaps we're not implementing. Mm -hmm. so we have social um, connection to other people. We have exercise. We have nutrition and hydration. Sleep. Get enough sleep. Important. Because if you don't sleep, actually your brain doesn't work. Hormones are releasing differently. And we feel pretty awful about ourselves. Um, some form of uh, mindfulness or meditation practice. And I know I'm not suggesting that everybody has to, you know, I teach yoga and meditation, but truthfully, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, what's the politically right word? <laughs> meditation, right. Is not, meditation is not the solution for life. Hmm. It is one tool. I think it's important, but there's a lot of, um, a lot of things out there, just meditate, just meditate, just meditate, nonstop meditate. It's like, well, you can't meditate your way through certain things. You actually need to have action around things. You can't just sit around and meditate and it's going to be a salvation for everything. No, I'm not suggesting this. And I think meditation is important, especially important for things where you don't have control over and sit with that and then be okay with that. And this is important. Yeah. That meditation is fantastic. So some kind of mindfulness meditation and breath work. I'm a big believer of breath work. It doesn't have to be a lot. We could go, it would be another two hour conversation, but some form of breath work. It will um, increase, uh, again, hormonal release, um, health, well being. And the last thing is gratitude. I really highly suggest for everybody to have either a gratitude journal or every day I like have one, two or three things we can sit with. You can take two minutes and say, I'm grateful for blah, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And we all find something we'll be grateful for. hundred percent, something in our life we can be grateful for. So we kind of overriding the mini me and say, Oh, you are this, you are this, you are this. Actually I did good things in life and also life provided me with good things and I'm so grateful. Um, I think these sort of things are important. Um, also, um, making a list, this is important. Mm -hmm. Making a list of everything what we say in our heads, what we should be doing, we should have, and then sit with that. So list all the things when I'm saying, I should do this, I should do this, I should do that. I should have this, I should have that, and should have whatever. And then what happens when we make a list of shoulds? Actually, we want to achieve the very thing what we're saying that we should do or should have. And then sit with it. What could be the, what is the gap? What is the action I need to take to actually have it? And I replace the should with could. Can, I will, and I must. And actually, it's Anthony Robbins who said, if you can, you must. So no shoulds. It's like no shoulds in our <laughs> life. It's all about I could do it. I can do it. So therefore, I must do it. So I actually make my feel good because I take action, regardless of the results. This is important. I might not get the exact result I'm putting out there, but I'll take the steps. And I take small steps. We talked about chunking down small steps to read that 500 page book. And then, you know, if I read 20 pages a day, then I don't know, in 30 days, I'll read 500 pages. And it's, it's cool achievement. And then I feel actually good about myself. If I think that I should be reading this book in five days because X, Y, and Z can, well, maybe it's not my way. I just read 20 pages, but I do read 20 pages. That's non-negotiable, 20 pages. 
I love it. Gabor, I love that. And I think just um, on the on, on those things, like something I've started doing from a gratitude perspective, a girlfriend of mine and I, we've just started WhatsApping each other five things we're grateful for daily. So that way it keeps us accountable as well. And, you know, it doesn't, I think, leveraging again, leveraging your community and people around you. So we check in and if something's not okay, um, we can we can have a chat about it. But thank you. That was, that was so, so, so good. And I... I'm going to make sure I am going to write down, I can do everything. And then at the end, in my gratitude, I did. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> the full circle. Yeah. Um, well, I think, look, I guess if anyone wants to find out more about the work you do, Inspiration for Life is your business. So I think I'll, I'll share the link in the um, in the post as well. So, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. It's been such a valuable I've taken so much as well away from it. So um, thank you again. And look, I hope things are going well for you and the family over there. And hopefully your son gets to nine minutes tomorrow. So there you go. <laughs> thank, thank you so you much. much. And uh, take care of yourself and all the best with your community. And I I know, as I know you, um, a little bit we spent time together that you know, incredible job, what you do. And, you know, with this as well, supporting people. And I see all the guests and, People who come into you have conversation with all those experts and uh, supporting your community. So it's fantastic. So I think we all should appreciate you, what you do. Oh, thanks, Gabor. I, I, it means a lot to me. But um, yeah, have a, well, have a wonderful evening and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.